Hey everybody, so welcome back to the channel. So I kind of noticed this is a reoccurring topic that popped up a couple times on my video last year of when I purchased my 2017 Porsche Macan S. And I noticed some other people were asking me, hey, I see you have Android Auto on your vehicle and you said you did it. How did you do that? So when I purchased the vehicle, this is one of the things that I found out and did some research that there are ways to upgrade the infotainment on the car to add those features. Um, but a lot of people were saying you need to go to the dealership or you have to have some guy connect to your vehicle and do this for a fee. And I actually found out how to do this myself. So to kind of save some other people the trouble that I had to go through and all the research that it took for me to get to that step, I figured that I would do a video and show you guys how I did the process on my 2017 Porsche Macan S. Before we get into that though, one little caveat I want to make is obviously this worked for my vehicle, right? And I know there's a bunch of other Porsche owners out there and there's a bunch of other variants and models and upgrades, so on and so forth. So just to give it a little bit of a precursor, I know this worked for me. You're responsible for what you do with your own vehicles. Let's just get that out of the way before we even start this process. But let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so to start things off, obviously you're going to need a Porsche Macan. Duh. However, the most important thing you're going to need to go get is an SD card. Now, it's recommended that you get a full-sized SD card, so basically this form factor that you're used to seeing in things like the camera we're filming on right here. However, you can use a micro SD card like I've done here. However, you're going to have to have the adapter to basically be able to plug that micro SD card into the back of to go to a full-sized SD card. So obviously, we have the computer, we have the SD card. However, we have to make sure that we have a way to access that SD card. So my computer, for example, does doesn't have a slot where I can just plug an SD card directly into it. You might need an adapter like this where it'll go from like a USB port that you're gonna have where you plug in your mouse, your keyboard, flash drive, so on and so forth. And it's got a way to plug in an SD card into it so that you can access it on the computer. Make sure you have that. All right, so now that you got a computer, you got an SD card, you got a way to access the SD card. We've got all the supplies that we need in order to go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and go back inside and I'll show you how to get everything onto the SD card using your computer. So now that we're back inside, we've got our computer here, right? We've got our SD card. So in my case, again, a micro SD card with the regular sized SD card adapter. Got that. And I've got this dongle, which will let me go from a USB port over to micro SD. So one thing we didn't talk about outside that I want to preface before we get into this is this update is for Porsche PCM version 4.0 and up, right? So this shipped with the 2017 Macan. The earlier shipped with Porsche PCM 3.0 and 3.1. So if your uh, infotainment looks like this, and not this, you're gonna to have to go through a different process. I know this version worked on the 2017. You might have to research and do a little bit to make sure this works for your particular model year. The first process that we need to do is to actually format our SD card. So I'm using a PC. Um, if you use a Mac, you'll have to find some different steps for that. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this PC and we're gonna find our SD card. It should be there already and we're gonna format the SD card. A couple things to be uh, concerned with here is first I wanna format the capacity to eight gig. The reason for that is the SD card can only be so big according to Porsche, so I put in a 128 gigabyte SD card, it's what I had, um, but we only need to have it uh, eight gigabytes in size. So the rest of that's gonna be free unused space, but we're not concerned with that. The second thing, and this is most critical, is the file system. So this is kind of how the drive works and interacts, right? We need to format this SD card as FAT32. From there, you can name it whatever you want. I called mine Porsche just because it made sense with what I'm doing. And then you're gonna hit start. This process should only take a couple seconds. Now we gotta get some content to load into it. So if you go into the description for this video, I'm gonna put some links. Open the first link I've sent you. It's gonna take you to a website that looks like this. All right, so when you go to this first website, it's gonna have a title at the top that's called MIB More Incredible Bash. Basically what this is, is it's a bit of software that we can put on the SD card so that we can interact with the computer that's in the infotainment system. Basically, there's a computer there. This code that we're gonna put on the SD card allows us to talk to the computer, and then we'll put some code on the SD card as well to write to that computer that's inside the car. Now, on this website, you're gonna see a bunch of different versions of this software. Um, basically, this stuff has been updated, you know, up to current time. What you're gonna do is go to the website and you're gonna look at the dates for each release and you're gonna find the one that's closest to the current date. Now, what I would tell you too is look for the one that says latest. There usually is some pre-releases or beta, stuff like that. 
I wouldn't recommend using that. I would make sure that you use the one that says latest release. So go ahead and download that and you're gonna click on the source code dot zip. You're gonna download a compressed zip file. All right, once that first thing is downloaded, let's go ahead and open it up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that zip file and we're gonna extract all the contents over to that SD card that we just formatted. So basically you find where that SD card is and you're gonna dump all of that content over to it. Now from there, the next thing we need to do is download patches. So patches, even though we've downloaded that software, there's some patches that are applicable to our install process and what we're doing where we need to have some additional code to help us out through this. So you're gonna to go to the second website that I'm gonna send you. There is a login, the username and password are both guessed. Feel free to use that. It even shows it on the website when you go to it. From there, you're gonna to go to the MIB folder and you're gonna look for a, another compressed zip called MIB patches. You're gonna download this compressed zip folder as well, and we'll use that here in a minute. Is once those that first zip folder is on your SD card, we're gonna navigate to that SD card. We're gonna look at all the files and folders that we've uploaded to it. Inside, you're gonna see a folder called patches. What you're gonna do is that second link that we went to, you're gonna extract all the contents from that zip folder, and you're gonna put inside of the patches folder. So whatever um, you extracted, you're gonna copy and paste that in or extract directly to that patches folder underneath. Now the next thing we can do for this SD card, you don't have to do this, but if you'd like to and just make the process a little easier, is inside the root or basically that starting folder of your SD card. So if you double click and see all the files and folders in that SD card, you're gonna find a file that says SWDL auto run, and it's gonna have an underscore at the front of that file name. If you'd like, you can remove that underscore, and basically as soon as you plug the SD card in and turn the car on, it's gonna process an update. And then at this point, we've got our SD card here. We can go ahead and unplug it. We've got all of our data off of it that we need to add. And then we can go take this back and plug this into our Porsche Macan. All right, so you're out there with your Macan. Obviously, you're gonna need your key. You'll need the SD card. You're gonna plug the SD card actually in under the infotainment. Don't know if you guys know it, but there is actually a little spot for this just below the screen. I'll show you where that's at. All right, so we got the SD card put into the Porsche Macan. Now, if you did that auto update where you removed the underscore, it should start the update process right away. If not, you've got to go ahead and go into your system menu and say that you have a software update and navigate to the SD card. You're going to go to SD card one or SD one. Now, once that update process starts, you're going to see a bunch of weird stuff kind of happen on the screen and a bunch of text, and it's even going to reboot itself a couple times. Basically, it should reboot itself three times to complete the update. And then once that's done, the update should finish and it should even confirm on the screen for you. All right, so after that update's completed and you've seen that the update's complete, um, you're gonna give yourself a five minute timer. And the reason for that is some of the content that's on the SD card as well as the computer and the car itself, they gotta figure some stuff out first. So basically give it about a five minute buffer to figure everything out and then it'll be ready for the next step. Now that we've completed our five minute timer, you're gonna press that home button if you're not on that screen already. And then you're gonna press a special key combination to enter the software that we just installed. That key combination is the car and the tuner button. You're gonna press both of those buttons together, so press and hold for five seconds. Once you do that, you're gonna see some green text on the screen. It's gonna kind of feel like you're hacking a little bit. Uh, it's gonna look like the matrix. Ignore that, that's totally fine. It's what we'd expect to see. Inside that menu, now we're in what's called GEM, which is kind of like an engineering menu uh, that we use to interact with the computer inside the car. You're gonna see two things that are gonna be on your screen. You're gonna see production and MIB. Now, even though you guys have a touch screen, you know, that you're normally used to interacting with the car, you're gonna use the wheel on the right, which you would use like for your tuner and whatnot, not the volume knob. You're gonna use that wheel on the right and you're gonna rotate it to move through the menus and you're gonna push in on that dial to actually access menus or confirm settings. We're gonna go down to the MIB menu. Once you scroll down to the MIB menu and you push in, you're gonna see a bunch of other choices underneath, right? You're gonna see some text. You're gonna scroll down again until you get some more options. Inside this, you're gonna see an update button. Once you see that, go ahead and click on that, and again, you'll scroll down. But what we're gonna do is perform an update. So even though we just updated the software with that software update that we applied with the SD card, we're also gonna apply an update through this MIB function. What this is gonna do is this is gonna enable your Android Auto and your Apple CarPlay. All right, so you just went through and did that update on the green screen, and it says everything's done, right? So we're good to go there, Android Auto and everything. That software is pushed over to your um, computer inside the car. We're good to go to access that function. 
What we're gonna do at this point is actually press the home button on your infotainment, and that'll take you back to the main screen. Now, once you're on the home screen, you're gonna go ahead and go into your center console. I'm assuming you already have a USB cable for your car to charge your phone. Use that same cable and plug your phone in. At this point, your head unit should detect that you've plugged in a device that has Android Auto. Now, you may need to go into the settings inside the car to go find the Android Auto and enable it. That might have to happen. But at this point, you've got the software. So once that's enabled, then you're going to go through the Android Auto setup screen that you're used to seeing on any other car that has Android Auto. All right, so obviously I hope that you guys found this helpful. I know I had to go dig through a lot of stuff to get this far to get Android Auto on my own vehicle. So hopefully this made it easier for other people after the fact. If you have any questions about this install or you need anything else on your Porsche Macan, feel free to reach out, leave a comment or uh, message me. Love to help you in any way. Thanks for watching.